it just blows my mind, you guys. It absolutely blows my mind uh, <laughs> how CS, FMCSA can, you know, give exemptions to some huge carriers. And then for hotshots like us, you know, we got to jump through all these hoops or even other big rig carriers, other CDL carriers. We have to jump through all the regular hoops, but you know, other companies, oh, they can get a five-year exemption and have that renewed and renewed and renewed. If you guys didn't, didn't hear this story, uh, it's about CRST. If you've driven on any highway across the country, CRST is a very, uh, very large carrier. They specialize in expedited freight, which and they, they have all, all different, they cover all different modes of transportation, I'm, I'm sure, but they're known for their expedited freight and what that is, is it's team driving. It's team driving. And CRST is one of the big companies that when you have a brand new CDL, they will hire you with no experience. But also, apparently, if you just have a CLP, which is a commercial learner's permit, then they will still hire you and put you in a team uh, position with a quote unquote trainer, right? Somebody with a CDL, with a commercial driver's license. and. You don't even have to get your own CDL. You can get right on the road with a learner's permit so long as you're in a team driving situation in one of their trucks with one of their drivers. All you have to do to get a CLP, which is a commercial learner's permit, all you have to do is take the written test, which they're not even written, they're on the computer. You go to your, your local DMV in your state and you take two or three tests or maybe more depending on if you want any endorsements. All you do is you answer some multiple to multiple choice questions and if you pass, you know, if you don't get too many wrong, then you, you pass and they give you a little piece of paper that says, okay, now you have a commercial learner's permit, a CLP, okay? With that CLP, then what you're supposed to be able to do with that is you're supposed to be able to start to train, be able to drive legally on the highways with a CDL holder in the truck with you. That's how you're supposed to train. You're supposed to train, you're supposed to practice your driving, you're supposed to practice your maneuvers, uh, backing up, alley docks, you know, all of that stuff. You're supposed to be able to practice that. And then when you feel you're prepared for the actual skills test at the DMV, which is the actual walk around, the physical walk around, your pre-trip, your in-cab inspection, your air brakes inspection, your your straight back, your offsets, your alley dock, your whatever, your all of that. And then you go on a driving, a drive test um, with the person at the DMV, right? That's how you get your CDL. If you pass the skills test, then you can get your CDL. Well, CRST is kind of combining all of those things together. They're like, okay, go take your test and we'll stick you in a truck on the highways with a, with a, with a qualified driver, with a trainer. That person has not even, has, has had zero time on the road and already you're putting them to work. So you're making them deal with another stranger in the truck, right, a trainer, which could be the same sex, could be the, an opposite sex, it could be your night driving, you know, whether you've got glasses, whether you've got diabetes, whether your trainer does, you know, um, and the, even if they're saying that the trainer can be off duty and sleeping in the back while the trainee with the learner's permit is driving completely alone on their own because it's team driving right so you're switching off and yeah you know a lot of a lot of trainers they'll sit here when they're not technically supposed to when they're off duty they'll sit in the passenger seat and they may you know show you things and teach you things but i just think it's so 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 much of a risk and and i think it's bullshit you know i had i had to go and get my cdl <laughs> just to run hot shot because i run i wanted to haul more than 26,000 pounds. My GCWR of my truck is 40,000 pounds. So in order for me to be able to have that extra 14,000 pounds of, of flexibility and the weight capacity that I can carry in my one ton pickup truck and a gooseneck trailer behind me, I had to go and get my CDL. I couldn't get the learner's permit and then just go and start and just do whatever I wanted. Well, I guess if I had a husband with a CDL, I guess I could have done that. But I was on my own, right? I am on my own. so. It's just, oh, it drives me nuts. And, and the FMCSA granted CRST this five-year exemption to let them do this, this training period with team driving. Basically, it's team driving. And uh, they granted it in 2018, and now it was
comes up in 2023 and then they gave them another one so their crst is clear to run this freaking facade this joke of of training for another five years until 2028 and they hire over 2,000 brand new uh drivers which i think that number is very low i think that's a, a an underestimate of the amount of drivers that they hire per year that are brand new or just got their learner's permit and i i just think it's it sucks because i'm just a little guy you know i'm just a little guy i'm a peon nobody knows me in the transportation world nobody knows my company i am not one of the big box carriers by any means you know um yellow uh yrc just closed down they had like a i don't know five billion dollar per year hold on the market you know for ldl carrier so i mean just they're huge they were huge you know there's a lot of big carriers crst is also huge and you should see their their safety scores okay it doesn't check out i don't know how fmcsa could could grant them this because their safety scores are poop and you know me i get two or three you know naughty inspections and all of a sudden you know i got freaking the feds knocking at my door but well potentially i'm i'm not that never happened but you know, I'm saying like it has happened to other people. I know that it has. You know, you get on the on the FMCSA's naughty list, and you're a, a little guy like me and you. Shoot, they'll shut you down. But if you're running, you know, buku bucks for the industry, oh, you can have an exemption. Sure, put fucking Joe Blow on the road who doesn't speak English, right? Can't read English, hardly speaks it, can't really read it. How the hell are you going to read the road signs? How can you read a GPS? How do you know where you're going? And then you stick them with a trainer, which you're lucky, okay? You're lucky if you get a trainer that's halfway decent with these big box carriers. I'm telling you, especially with CRST, I got inside information with them. I know people who have had brand new CDLs and went to try and work for them. And on their website, CRST says, oh, team driving, they make up to 200,000 per year. I don't know what team is making up to 200,000 per year at CRST. It certainly was not the numbers that I was told from the people that I knew who went to CRST. Uh, it was really bad and the conditions were really bad. And I was told that, you know, CRST, oh, you run out of hours? Oh, you had to take a 34? I'll call you back in five minutes. Okay, you're good. You have your hours back. I mean, they, <laughs> they, they fudge all kinds of stuff. You know, I mean, people, they got people that are brand new without a CDL, just a permit on the road, exhausted, starved. They're pushing them. They're not giving them breaks and they're not even training them properly. You know, they're, they're really just hold the steering wheel. And now there's so many sensors in all these trucks. You know, if you, if you veer off over a line, there's a sensor and something's going to beep at you in the big rigs, you know, and, and CRST there, uh, they were probably one of the first big companies who, um, started swapping out trucks for automatics because of this. So they could just keep people going, keep processing people through this loop. And it kind of sucks because it's, uh, you, in order to get hired at a decent company as a class a driver you have to have experience most good companies are going to want two years minimum experience and a good record good driving record so you if you're a cdl holder who wants to learn about the business and wants to get hired your your options are very limited of where you can go who is going to hire you with a brand new cdl why do you think i got my cdl and i went independent i don't want to deal with all that crap i don't need somebody you know I don't need all of that. I'll put all the pressure I need on myself, and when I'm done, I'm done. When I need to break, I need, I break. It's just so sad, you guys, and just, you know, be mindful. I mean, CRST is, is damn near as bad as Swift, you know? Uh, just be mindful, you know, when you're around those trucks. They got the they got the automatic trucks, and, you know, all these sensors, they're governed. The, the truck, you know, all you really have to do is keep it between the lines, but they're pushing these people clear across the country and if you've never driven otr uh it's it's a it's a beast you know going through big cities going through different uh weather going through um whether you're empty whether you're loaded what kind of trailer what kind of load you have behind you i mean it's um it's tough it's an adjustment it's not easy and uh <laughs> for them to be able to get away with this it just it just it, it freaking blows my mind. I had to go to CDL school just so I could drive a freaking one ton pickup with more than 10,000 pounds of freight behind me. You know, when, if I didn't want to do it commercially, then I could just do it privately and nobody's going to probably bat an eye at it. If 
if I just had a farm truck and, you know, a big trailer hauling my own hay around, I could haul 50,000 pounds probably, you know, and, and nobody's going to bother me. But because I wanted to do it commercially, because I wanted to do this the right way, I had to go to school. Then I had, you know, you have to jump through all of these hoops. And um, it's such a shame because I just, you know, the more I've been in it, I've been in, I've been in transportation, you guys. I think I got my first job at a trucking company. I was, I think I was 19, honestly. I think my kid was under a year old. So, I mean, and she's 19 years old now. So, I, you know, I've been in the industry for like 20 years and I've seen a lot, I've worked at a lot of different big companies and uh, <laughs> the days of the all-American badass trucker are gone. You know, they're gone, you guys. But now, everything is so regulated, diesel is so high, insurance has a grasp on all of us, FMCSA with their safety points, you know, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm saying even I've been dinged for things that was like, really? Really, you're questioning me for that? Like, they're just searching, they're just searching for something to write you up for. And it's like, well, what is the, where, what, what are we doing here? You know, I mean, I, it's not like I got tail lights out. It's not like my brakes don't work. It's not, you know, they, they're searching for any little thing. And um, it's such a shame. I understand the need, the need for a, a safety, you know, score and a safety, I get that. But, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these way stations and, you know, checkpoints and, and, you know, the highway patrol guys that pull you over and do an inspection, some of them are just, they just go way above and beyond. And it's such a, it's such a money grab. That's what it feels like to me coming from the trucker. You know, some of the questions that I've been asked from, from DOT officers, it's like, it's like, wow, you're just, you're just, you're dying to give me something so that you can collect some money for your state, whatever state I happen to be in, you know, and it's so unfortunate. And I've had my little, you know, my little incidents. I've never been ugly to an officer just because they got me for something. I mean, if they got me for something, whether I felt it was big or not, if, if it was against, you know, if it was against regulation it's against regulation, then I earned it, you know, I earned it. Um, but some of the stuff is just so petty and, I don't know, you guys, just, you know, everybody talks so much shit about Swift, which rightfully so. Okay, me too. I talk shit about, <laughs> I talk shit about Swift, but hey, we should be talking shit about CRST and even go so far as to continue to talk shit about the FMCSA, respectfully so, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying um, because of FMCSA, I'm going to close my doors. No, I'm just a little guy, you know, trying to, you know, I guess guys say I'm just a squirrel trying to get a nut. Well, I'm just a mare trying to get a carrot out here. You know, I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to do my deal and um, make some money. But uh, God, it's just how FMCSA can, can give them an extension, a five-year extension to put non-CDL drivers in a big rig. I can't even drive this without a CDL. But they'll put somebody with a learner's permit in the driver's seat with 80,000 pounds behind them, you know, 75 or 80 feet long, and they've never driven before in their lives. And they'll tell them, go from California to New York, be there in, in two days, you and your team. It's just amazing. It, 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 it's scary. It's scary. That's like, that's like me allowing my daughter to get her learner's permit, and then I tell her, okay, now drive me cross country. Drive me from California to New York because I can sit there. I have a, a driver's license, so I'll just sit there or I'll sit, I'll lay down in the back, well, you know, at night while she drives and I should trust her to drive. And not only trust her to keep us two alive, but keep everybody else around us in the vicinity alive too. I just think that's so dangerous. I just think that is so scary. CRST, I just feel like they're, you know, it's such a numbers game for, for big box carriers and big, big business. You know, uh, big companies. Period. It's a numbers game. Um, Seventy percent are going to flunk out, and that thirty percent that make it, um, maybe they stay with CRST. Maybe they do good, um, but that other seventy percent, you know, just end up moving on to something else, or, or, or they hate, you know, being over the road. They hate that type of lifestyle because it's it's really tough. The position that CRST, you know, puts you in. When I train people. 
it's nothing like a big box carrier. It's nothing like that. Absolutely nothing like that. And I've trained, you know, I've, I've been blessed to, to have an opportunity to train um, more than a handful of people and get them through their their uh, CDL process and train them to run hotshot in. You could have a guy on the road for up to a year, up to a year with no CDL and they're just still running them, still running them, still running them. And they'll take anybody, you know, they'll take anybody, they'll give you a shot. And if you, if you can hack it, maybe you stay, or if you can hack it, at least you stay long enough to get enough experience and to get your CDL in order to move forward and move on to another company. But usually uh, every big company like that, they will make you sign a contract that you're going to be with them for a year or two years or whatever. And um, they put you at such a low rate per mile that it, it's like you you barely have enough. Hopefully you don't have a household to support, but because you're barely going to have enough to pay for all the stuff that we have to pay for because we live on the road. I feel like CRST is cranking people out in and out so fast that they have such a revolving door. You know what I would like to see? Instead of the FMCSA just going to the executives and they, you know, of CRST and, and saying, oh yeah, well this is, this is, this, the, here's all the reasons why our plan works so great and we need to continue to, you know, uh, <laughs> hire drivers that aren't, don't have their CDL yet. What I would like to see is for FMCSA to put in some undercover people, some 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 people that work for the FMCSA, put them in as CLP trainees into some of those CRST trucks, and let's really see how CRST is running their operation, their day-to-day -day operation. I don't care about the numbers at the end of the year or the end of the quarter or their driver retention percentages or you know how much money they made or they lost. Or I want to know how are you really running your shop day to day. Because that, that, that's really going to give FMCSA uh, an idea of whether this works or whether it doesn't. I think that, that that would really shed some light on whether this program is successful. Because on paper they say, oh, it's successful. Yeah, here, take another five years uh, extension, you know, so that you can continue to run this program. No, get in the trucks. Let's see how it's really running. And start talking to some people who are still working for CRST but are not happy but they they know that they have to pay their dues they have to sit somewhere and get enough experience so that they can go somewhere else or talk to some guys and girls that you know didn't like it at CRST that had some bad stories uh, that, and, that, and that's not just CRST that's everywhere that's everywhere uh, with these big box carriers it's all the same thing they just they're popping them in and popping them out it's constantly a revolving door and some will stick and some will not and it's kind of unfortunate when you think about it like that, you know, like we're all people, <laughs> but for big box carriers like that, you're just a number, man. You're just a number. So anyways, there is um, a slight amount of hope other than us talking crap, right? Um, you can go um, on the FMCSA. There's like a 30 day challenge um, where people can write up complaints or write up their opinions on on this uh, this whole scenario and maybe it can get uh, shut down. I don't think it's gonna happen, but you know, you can't do that if you guys wanna check into that. Anyway, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, y'all. You better hold on. Stay tuned. I'll have some more videos coming soon. Stay safe, guys.